Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's dive right into some seriously cool stuff happening in the world of XR and VR. Yeah, we've got a ton to unpack. From AR glasses that could replace your smartphone to a deep dive into Meta's big VR play. And get this, we're talking AR glasses that could make your smartphone totally obsolete. Imagine a world where, instead of scrolling through apps, you're navigating the wash with interactive overlays for everything. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? Yeah. But the tech is getting closer than ever. We're talking about playing games that spill out onto your coffee table or getting directions that pop up right in front of you. No more fumbling with your phone while walking down the street. Exactly. And it goes way beyond navigation. Think shopping. Imagine walking into a store and instead of pulling out your phone for reviews, personalized style suggestions just appear in your field of vision. Hold on like a virtual personal stylist. I'm listening. Exactly. Puma's already partnering up to create these interactive shopping experiences. But it gets even more mind-blowing when you think about the classroom. Okay, now you've got my attention. How does XR shake things up in education? Imagine, instead of static textbooks, students could experience interactive 3D models, go on virtual field trips, even dissect a heart virtually. Wow, hands-on learning without the, um, well, you know. <laughs> but how close are we to actually wearing these AR glasses? Are we talking prototype or ready to wear? That's the million-dollar question, right? Yeah. Meta's Orion AR glasses are definitely in development. The rumors say they're aiming for a sleek, everyday look. But there are some big hurdles to overcome. Like what? What's holding things back? Comfort, for one. I mean, you're wearing these things on your face all day, every day. They have to be lightweight, comfortable. They can't feel like a clunky gadget. Yeah, comfort and style, those are make-or-break factors for sure. And speaking of hurdles, let's talk about Avalanche. It's Meta's new VR cloud gaming system, and it's been on everyone's wish list. Rumor has it we might even see a launch as early as July 24th. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah, but honestly, I think a lot of us are still wrapping our heads around cloud gaming in general. So break it down for us. Why is Avalanche such a big deal for VR? Okay, so imagine this. You want to play the latest, most demanding VR games, but you don't have a crazy expensive gaming PC. Right, because those things can cost a fortune. Totally. Yeah. So with Avalanche, you don't need a top-of-the-line PC. All the processing power, all the heavy lifting happens on Meta's servers. And then the game is streamed directly to your headset. So kind of like Netflix, but for VR gaming. Exactly. So Avalanche could be the thing that finally makes high-end VR gaming accessible to anyone, no matter their budget. That's the idea. It could really democratize VR gaming. That's pretty amazing when you think about it. But I'm guessing there are a few speed bumps on the road to this VR revolution. What are the challenges? The biggest one, internet speed. You need a rock-solid connection for a seamless VR gaming experience. No lag, no interruptions, that kind of thing. Ah, uh, so even in the metaverse, it comes down to internet speed. Pretty much, yeah. But hey, at least we're getting closer to a world where our virtual selves can move as realistically as we do in real life. And that brings us to Bone Lab's new body tracking tech. We're not talking about clunky avatars here. This is your virtual self mirroring your every move. And it's incredible. This tech, it's called Inside Out Body Tracking, or IOBT for short. IOBT, got it. <laughs> so how does it actually work? Okay, so your MetaQuest headset, it already has sensors to track how your head moves, how your hands move, right? Right. With IOBT, they basically supercharge those sensors. Now they can track your wrists, your elbows, shoulders, even your torso. All in real time. All in real time. So no more stiff robotic movements in VR. Our virtual selves are finally catching up to our real-life agility. This feels like a turning point for realistic VR, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. In fact, Brandon J. Lotch, the developer behind Boneworks and Bone Lab, he said that developers who don't embrace this tech, they risk being left behind. Wow. Strong words. So it sounds like IOBT is about more than just aesthetics. It's about capturing those subtle ways we move in real life, making virtual interactions feel more genuine. Exactly. And it's about way more than just gaming. Think about the potential applications for things like fitness apps. Okay. I'm intrigued. What could IOBT do for fitness apps? Tell me more. Imagine, instead of just watching your form on screen, you're getting real-time feedback from a virtual trainer. Like, they're right there with you. Okay, that's next level. But also, kind of intimidating. Like, what if my virtual trainer is judging my every move? Well, maybe a little bit. But hey, think of the progress you'd make. But seriously, this tech has incredible potential for physical therapy, too. Imagine someone recovering from an injury. They could use VR with IOBT to rebuild strength and coordination in a safe environment. Now that's using tech for good. 
Speaking of pushing boundaries, let's talk Quest 3S. It's like the Quest 3's quieter sibling that's been making noise with one killer feature. Amazing low light tracking. And it really shines when the lights go down. Upload VR even said it holds its own against pricier models in low light conditions. Really? So spill the beans. How does the Quest 3S nail low light tracking so well? Infrared magic, basically. They use infrared LEDs and illuminators, kind of like giving the headset night vision. We can't see the infrared light, but the Quest 3S's cameras sure can. So it's like a built-in spotlight for VR, even in the dark. Pretty much. Yeah. And that means smoother tracking, faster hand tracking initialization, and way fewer errors. A recipe for a truly immersive experience, huh? So wait, does this mean my non-S Quest 3 is stuck with well-lit VR forever? Not at all. You can always grab some external infrared illuminators for your Quest 3. Easy way to boost low light tracking without upgrading the whole headset. Good to know. Good to know. It seems like these advancements aren't just about flashy tech. It's about making VR more accessible to everyone. Exactly. And not just in terms of cost, but also in thinking about who can actually use this tech. Like better low light tracking. That's huge for people with disabilities who might need different lighting. Such a good point. It's about making sure everyone feels included in this new digital world. Right. As these experiences get more immersive, those virtual worlds need to reflect the real world. Mm. All its different people and stories and perspectives. Absolutely. It all makes you wonder, what does it even mean to be human as our world becomes more digital? That's a big one. No easy answers there. No, but I think it's exciting that these technologies make us confront those questions. We're not just along for the ride. We're shaping this technology and shaping our own future. It's both exciting and a little bit, whoa, where is this all going? But imagine if this tech could actually help us understand each other better. You mean like literally stepping into someone else's shoes in VR and seeing the world through their eyes. That could be powerful. Exactly. Forget storytelling. This could be empathy building on a whole new level. And it's not just about emotions. Think about what this could do for education, for scientific discovery, for solving problems. Okay, let's unpack that a bit. What kind of real world problems can we tackle with XR and VR beyond just having fun? We'll take architecture, for example. Okay. Instead of just looking at blueprints, imagine architects could collaborate in VR, walk through a building, make changes in real time. No matter where they are in the world. Exactly. That's amazing. Or think about surgeons practicing complex surgeries in a virtual operating room with AI assistance and real-time data. So from skyscrapers to surgery, XR and VR could change the game in so many fields. And it's not just about being faster or fancier. It's about making a real difference. Right. We could use VR to train first responders for disasters or even help people overcome phobias in a safe space. It's incredible to think just a few years ago, this tech seemed like pure science fiction, and now it's helping us solve real-world problems. Yeah, all right. But with all this talk about the amazing things XR and VR can do, we can't forget about the potential downsides. That's true. How do we make sure we're using these incredibly powerful tools responsibly as they become more integrated into our lives? Right. Uh, what ethical considerations are we overlooking as we dive headfirst into this unknown? That's the million-dollar question. And honestly, there's no easy answer. Yeah. But it's something we absolutely have to keep asking as the tech keeps developing. Absolutely. One of the biggest things to think about is data privacy. Oh, for sure. With AR glasses potentially becoming as common as smartphones. Exactly. Think about the amount of data that could be collected. It's huge. We need some serious ground rules, some clear guidelines to make sure our digital lives are just as protected as our physical lives. 100%. Yeah. And it's not just about protecting our data. It's about making sure everyone has equal access to this technology, regardless of their background. Right. We have to be aware of the digital divide and avoid creating a world where only the wealthy can experience the full potential of XR and VR. Exactly. So as we wrap up our deep dive into XR, VR, and the metaverse, I think the biggest takeaway is this. We're at a turning point. We are. This tech is evolving faster than ever, but it's about so much more than just the gadgets themselves. It really is. It's about how we connect with each other, how we see the world, and how we shape the future. It's about asking tough questions. It's about being mindful of the impact these technologies will have on our lives, our society, even our planet. It's about approaching all of this with a sense of wonder. And a commitment to using these incredible tools to make the world a better place. So to everyone listening, yeah. keep exploring, keep asking those tough questions, and never stop dreaming big because the future of reality, it's in our hands. Like that. That's it for this deep dive into the future. We'll catch you next time.